previously on Libel the Bible. Yahweh creates everything. Yahweh hates everything. Yahweh kills everything. Yahweh torments Abraham and all his descendants. He sends them into the heart of enemy territory. Where they become slaves for countless generations. Countless? You really can't count the generations? All right, about 20 generations. Feeling guilty, Yahweh genocides Egyptian children to help the Israelites escape. And massacres a lot of Egyptian adults for good measure. He kills a few Israelites along the way as well. He then gives the Israelites a bunch of rules about sex and food and penises and donkeys and clothing and... Okay, we get it. Anyway, Yahweh forces the Israelites to attack sovereign kingdoms. And slaughter the men. And rape and enslave the women and children. Yahweh warns about worshiping other gods. Moses dies. Joshua takes over. Under Joshua's command, the Israelites conquer Canaan. Joshua apportions land to each tribe. Finally, after many generations of tragedy, the Israelites can live out their days peacefully on their promised land. Everything was perfect. Until the Israelites did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. And were forced to live under the subjugation of a series of Canaanite rulers. Then, a Yahweh-powered judge would step in to save the Israelites and set them on the right path. Only for the cycle to repeat after each judge's death. And don't even get me started on Samson. That was crazy. I still want to know why he stole the gates. And now, the Book of Ruth. I don't give a fuck. Exactly, exactly. Say fucking... hello, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hello. This is Scott. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this is Rusty. Wait, I'm sorry. Did I step on your uh, catchphrase? Because you know what tonight I am? Yeah. I'm the comic sans of podcasters. <laughs> That's oh, who no. I am today. <laughs> Burn it with fire. <sighs> yeah. Scott is feeling a little bit out of sorts. I don't know if he was feeling this way before I arrived, but he's been fumbling around <laughs> with this fucking Linux notebook. Trying to like get it to comply. You will comply to his desire to have like I don't know screen mirror or extend his screen. It doesn't matter it doesn't because matter. he has been occupied with this goddamn fucking computer. <sighs> it's done. It's good. Man. The entire time I've been here, which is about half an hour now. Yeah. So we had an unusually long previously on. And when I saw it, I kind of went gasp. It's really long. I'll probably only fuck it up three or four times and we'll have to re-record it. And then we were cruising right along, man, cruising. And about halfway through it, I said to myself, wow, this is going pretty good. Don't fuck this up. I hope you don't fuck it up, Scott. And the very next line, I fucked up, and I couldn't get it back together after that. Right. So Scott's upset because he fumbled through a few lines in our previously on, which we simply stopped. We deleted the mistake and then recorded Whatever Rusty, line needed to be said. Rusty's being unusually generous in his, uh, his excusing of my fumbling. He's, he's being unusually generous. And I'm going to take it, man. I'm going to take that generosity, man. I don't know. I just I don't understand why you're being so hard on yourself for, like, flubbing Somebody a line. Somebody has to be. You do it constantly. I know. It's so annoying. <laughs> Yo, I don't read too good. <laughs> but I, it's funny, too, because I consciously kept the lines short. Yeah. <sighs> You know, because I knew it was going to be like a long one because it's recapping everything so, up to now. So what you're saying is you understand I have special needs. Like I'm a special needs kind of guy. So you keep them short for me? Oh, you mean just because it's Why long? are you surprised <laughs> that I understand what your uh, mental needs you're are? Right, you're right. You know what? I should appreciate it not be upset. You're right. I, I need to be more appreciative. Like I feel like, you know, I've been accommodating to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've driven you around, right? <laughs> I've taken you out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. <sighs> How was your week, Russ? Did we say this is libel to Bible? Um, I don't think so, but it is. It's, it is. It is, it is, it's it's libel to Bible. Bible. It is. It's libel. Episode 71. It's a season premiere. And that's how I start off, fumbling my lines and shit, and then talking about fumbling the lines? Well, like, actually, you didn't start off fumbling your lines. You started off complaining and whining about stumbling through your lines. <laughs> the stumbling through your lines happened during the recording of something else. All right. I got I to gotta, I gotta work on like my, uh, my mental focus. 
got to stay in the moment. Yeah, what, what's going on, Scott? Why? What, know, what's right? got you all distracted? <sighs> not enough alcohol. You know, I cut back a lot. Not a lot. I mean, I drank yesterday, but so you were uh, out all day yesterday. Not all day. It was, a, it, was a, it was an abbreviated day, but yeah, I was out. All right. Hit some bars. Hit some bars, man. Sent me some photos of I like did, Rangers man. shit. Apparently there was a, and I noticed some, after you mentioned it that uh, if I was staying for the game, I noticed a lot of the patrons were wearing. It was uh, a Ranger gay bar jerseys. that you were in. It was. Um, I don't think it was a. I, I wouldn't say a gay bar per se. I mean, se, it but had like, like a bunch of like rainbow stuff, and even like the name of the bar was in rainbow. Yeah, that was on the shirt, not so much on like the awning outside oh, or anything. Okay. So I think it was just like so an it's ally gay friendly. Ally we're, to the we're allies. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. I mean, I think the ball. By the way, I'm not judging no, if you're if you are hanging out in gay bars. You would have been, you would have last season, right, with judges. But now we're on roof. No. <laughs> uh, no, I think my bartender was. I'm pretty sure it was gay, but I don't. I didn't. I didn't get to. I don't know. I didn't get a whole gay vibe from the place. No. Whatever that even means anymore, I don't fucking know what that means. Why are you pretty sure that the bartender was gay? What was the giveaway? The way he said, "Hey." <laughs> All right. Nah, I don't know. So there was an affect. Yeah, right. the gay sense. affect. Yeah. All right. So, what about people yeah. that talk like this? Do you know about like this whole thing? It's like a real. Yeah, I've thing. heard about it. I actually heard some woman. Like, I forgot it, what it's called. It's, it's been going on for a while though. That, that now, a couple years now. It, it's been going I, on for like a couple of years now. I think. Well, more than a couple of years. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's like. Mm. <sighs> I guess it's like back in the '80s when people used to do like valley talk. Yeah, but who actually did that? Like. I remember people doing valley talk to make fun of people that are doing valley talk, but I never actually heard anybody speak like valley Probably talk. Probably people in the valley of California, like in San Fernando Valley. That's mm-hmm. where it originated from. Oh. So it's kind of like making fun of a Long Island accent, you know? Like mm. you're making fun of the valley accent. I got you. That's how right. people talked in like the suburbs of L.A. Uh, do they still talk like that? The valley. I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. They're in a valley. They probably got flooded, right? They had like a lot of uh, they had a lot of rain there. Recently. Well, they don't have a lot of rain. It's California. No, but they had it's a lot a of desert. rain. Like oh, all their reservoirs are all filled up again. And speaking of a lot of rain, it's raining today, right? Not only is it raining today. Here's the problem. It's a perfect encapsulation. Anybody who wants to see what the effects of climate change are should come to any major city mm-hmm. when it rains. And watch cities get flooded because our infrastructure That's crazy. is crumbling. That's crazy. We can't handle rain, Scott. There is There are giant lakes <laughs> on the Van Wyck Expressway and the Southern State, the Bell Parkway. There are lakes yeah. in the right lane because the water is not running off into anything and it just collects and sits there. And cars, it causes traffic and dangerous conditions. Mm-hmm. And it's like... It rained. It rained. It It didn't monsoon. You know, there wasn't a typhoon. It rained. The LIE was also closed in one one section. So was the Cross Island Parkway. So most of the major highways in Queens were either shut down or severely limited in their use. And it's only going to get worse as climate change continues and weather events become more extreme. We are not doing anything to prepare ourselves. Anything. Not a fucking thing. And we're not going to. We're not going to get off oil until the last fucking drop is squeezed from the ground. Maybe a couple of wars are fought, fought over it. All right. We're not going to do any of that. Yes, I agree. But fix the goddamn infrastructure that we have. Do things to prepare. Upgrade. You think all of the billions and billions of tax money they, they get from New Yorkers is available to go to infrastructure projects? Oh, no. It's going to support like <laughs> Alabama and Georgia yeah, and right, Florida right. Because, <laughs> because people love it there because they don't like pay taxes. Yeah, well, where do you think like <laughs> money is coming from to pay for your shit, you fucking idiots? Us, Mitch us, Mitch the people the that you complain about. Yeah. The people that you go look up, like who contributes the most in tax and federal tax revenue, and it's all the quote unquote communist states that you fucking complain about mm-hmm. contributing to your fucking socialist ass. Ask, ask. Ask Google or somebody how much Ron DeSantis, how many times his hat has been in his hand to Joe Biden since like the storms have been yeah. in Florida. DeSantis talks a lot of shit, but then begs for fucking federal aid every time the wind blows. It's terrible. It's too bad that he sponsors our uh, yeah, show. Oh, fuck. Yeah, right, right, right. <sighs> that guy, he's not polling very well. Maybe we should help him out. Yeah, people say he's highly <laughs> unlikable. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would figure I've heard, I've heard that exact <laughs> wording. Highly unlikable. But he says all the things that these people cheer about. I figured, you know, you know, he worked for Trump and he took it to, to almost another level. The problem is this. I think people believe that Trump means these things, which he does. Yeah. You know, he gleefully is like a racist and just <laughs> he's, he's just a bad person, you know? Ron DeSantis is a cynical person. He'll mm. say whatever it takes and he thinks like appealing to the Trump base is what's going to get him elected. And they know, they sense it. They sense so it. So you think he's not genuine like with his nonsense? I don't think he's genuine with like all of these beliefs about like he doesn't care about like gay marriage or trans right. issues. He went to Harvard. He doesn't give a fuck about any of that. You know mm. what I'm saying? And he's good looking. He's got to say it. <laughs> he's he's so weird looking. <laughs> His wife's good looking. Uh, well, that's because she didn't say thigh food. Remember that's that dating she, test he put out? No, like, I don't remember. I told you a couple episodes ago. I, I'll rehash it real quick. But he used to purposely take women out to restaurants or suggest they go out for Thai food. Yeah. And if they corrected him and said, don't you mean Thai food? He would make an excuse to leave the date and never talk to him again because he didn't want a woman questioning him. So he would purposely trip trying to I do this not test. remember you telling yeah. me this, yeah. but that is the most disgusting <laughs> thing I've ever heard in my entire fucking yeah. life. So you're telling me this idiot that he's with then like put up with that nonsense like yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. She didn't say anything. I guess not. Well, maybe he didn't run the test on her in particular. Maybe. Or maybe she just didn't hear it right. And Or maybe she's like, this is my ticket. This guy's going to somehow be governor. He's going to make money, oh and I'm going to fucking... Yeah. What a little yeah. man. Yeah, a little man. Yeah. little man. Let's reach out to his wife, see if she wants to sponsor us. Maybe we can have, like, dueling sponsors. I got to tell you, what's fucked up is, in our current system, however society started, going back to biblical times that we're reading about, <laughs> judges and all that... <laughs> Very good, Scott. You know, that's better than you putting in drops. <laughs> I'll be the drop. I'll be the human drop. So, however society is structured right now, it's almost impossible for someone with good intentions to reach the heights of power where they can actually affect meaningful change. Because people are filtered out step by step along the way to like those positions of power. You know what I mean? And so in our like system of like banking and politics, like all wrapped together in business and industry, you're going to get people like fucking DeSantis. That those are going to be the people who are like powerful and fucking have a microphone in front of them for the most part. Yeah. Just like sociopaths. Sociopaths will climb the ranks so, of our system. Yeah. Oh, you ha oh, you have to be a social. Of course. Yeah. yeah, of course. Of course. Do you, do you think even like the... the, uh, the you had me at do you think, Scott. Do, do you think his base down in Florida, even when he when he said, you know what, maybe we're going to build a jail right outside the Magic Kingdom. Do you think even they were like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? No. Uh, you think they were like... Oh, so why yes. is he polling so poorly? That's what I'm saying. Because he's not Trump. Yeah, I guess. Trump is going to be the Republican nominee. That's 100%. That's great. Yeah. yeah. We got some two awesome candidates running again, man. <laughs> Wait, you don't think Joe Biden, <laughs> well, listen, Joe you Biden know can do another? Like, Not only does he have to campaign this motherfucker. <laughs> You, do you understand <laughs> how much, like, vitamin B or D or whatever the fuck he's getting injected with to, to like, prop him up on a stage at this point? You know how much <sighs> of that they're going to have to fucking carry around? He's got to go through an entire campaign now. And if he wins, complete four more years. And God forbid he chooses fucking Kamala Harris again. She is a fucking idiot, man. Yo, have you seen any interview with her ever? Ever? A oh yeah, a couple. Not 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 many. No, she can't answer questions. Oh really? No. Oh, then you haven't seen interviews yeah. with her. After after we finish, after we get off the air, I'm gonna play you some fucking Kamala mm. interviews where she's asked basic questions about the very thing. It's kind of like if a movie star shows up to promote a movie on a late night show, and then the guy's like, "Tell us a little about the movie," and the <laughs> actor's like, <laughs> like he stumbles through an explanation. <laughs> Because he or she doesn't know what the fuck the movie's about. So when, like, there was one interview early on about she was sent to the border 
because there was like a crisis at the border and it was like after the Trump administration had fucked everything up. So they sent her down there and they asked her like a basic question and she gave like an all time idiot fucking Ugh. non answer because she wasn't prepared. And it's like, that's a question that you had to know was going to you should have been prepared for that. And so over the course of these past like three years or whatever, there, ha there are like, I don't know, a dozen interviews like that where she's shown up. Should have been knowing some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and she gets asked the question and it's like, oh my God, how did this woman rise through like the political ranks? She's got no charisma. She can't answer political questions. Like she is fucking, she's an idiot or she is suffering early onset dementia. You ask, I'm going to play you some fucking right, interviews. Right, you ask how and why. And I'm going to tell you the reason is because that girl, that girl was her. <laughs> I remember that. That girl is poison. <laughs> Never yeah. trust a big so, butt in a smile. Uh, how many times has a president run for re-election and dumped their running mate in favor of a new a one? A handful. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's going to be wrong. FDR, rough. like, FDR did it frequently. Well, he, he, he ran four, he got four elections, though. Yeah, like, that's <laughs> true. People. Even the vice president was probably like, damn, dude, I'm done with this shit. <laughs> yeah. I just watched something on FDR just today, actually. He didn't make it, he only made it a couple months into his fourth term. Yeah. So uh, you know what? When Joe and he, he died before like the end of the war too. Yeah, yeah. Like just a few months before the end of the war. Mm -hmm. A few months after being reelected and a few months before the end of it's the war. It's interesting to think whether or not he would have used like the nuclear bomb, you know? The way Truman did. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. it's, could he have like done it through diplomacy? Yeah. Oh, you know what? That'd be an interesting like uh, like man in the high castle type like alternative history. Like what if true if FDR didn't die and didn't drop the bomb, mm -hmm. what would have happened? It brings me back to that old saying, Edith Keeler must die. Hmm. Yeah, That's we, from Man in the High Castle? No, it's from Star Trek with Joan Collins. <laughs> <laughs> she delayed, when the Kirk and crew went back in time, yeah. she accidentally delayed yeah. well, she, America getting involved in the world war. Yeah. So Scott. Germany developed a bomb. So th there was no Federation, no Starfleet, all, all of history got changed, and then Spock like, looks dead penny and goes, Edith Keeler must yeah. die. Spoiler alert, she got hit by a car, right? She did, yeah. yeah. Um, you're talking to me, <laughs> right? Like it's something like, oh, he just forgot. I didn't just forget. I didn't really watch the original yeah, series, like Star Trek. Nobody's the original. Perfect. You know what it is? It's the weird like background music, <laughs> and and the awful sets. Yeah, it was it was cheesy cheap. Yeah. But the background music really like gets me. Like right. shit from that era when I watch like even movies, like right. a lot of media. And they have the background music. It doesn't always match like what's happening on the screen. And I'm like, who, how much heroin were they shooting in the editing room when they spliced this music together? Is this music left over from the porn they were <laughs> shooting next door? <laughs> it's just like some weird, like or jazzy, like it's weird. It, all them cop shows from back then too. Yeah, yeah you know like what else is yeah. weird? <laughs> it's this shot that they constantly use on Kirk. It's like the close up on like his eyes <laughs> With and the like light. the lighting, the lighting. <laughs> and like yeah. the music. And it's like they use that constantly. And it's it's so bizarre. Yeah. It's so bizarre. Yeah. More so. bizarre than this book we're reading. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to today because it's only like four chapters. So I think we can probably we're probably going to make it through. I would say we'll see. Maybe only two. I don't know, Scott. I don't know. Oof. I know it's I was wondering how high chapters. pitched your voice was going to get the longer that <laughs> sentence went on. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know what I was thinking about today? What? Nostalgia. I was thinking um, about nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I tend to avoid nostalgia. You're afraid of your emotions. No. It's not that I'm afraid of my emotions. <laughs> um, first of all, I don't know how to express emotions. That's different than being afraid of your emotions yeah, you're shouting in violence that's that usually works for you uh yes well <laughs> listen you you use what you have in the toolbox you know what i mean so sometimes i think of like if you there's nothing inherently wrong with nostalgia mm -hmm. but if you get too wrapped up in nostalgia it becomes i don't know pathetic you're living in the past you know what mm. I mean? It's like, how much can you relive of the past? But every once in a while, you know, going through nostalgia, 
is perfectly like fine and healthy. Okay. So today I was just thinking about like nostalgia. I was like thinking of that particular concept because I had. Oh, you weren't thinking of anything nostalgic. Well, you were I thinking was, of the concept. Of I nostalgia. was. Okay. So it was it was parallel thinking. Like while I was mm. being nostalgic about something, I was in parallel thinking about the concept of nostalgia. Ah, so what were you being nostalgic about, man? I was being nostalgic about music because, you know, like, um, growing up, I listened to, like, basically, like, classic rock. For the most, not growing up, but, like, once I was, like, in my late yeah. adolescence, yeah. early adulthood, it was, like, classic rock. After I did, like, the Top 40 thing, after I did, like, all that kind of stuff, classic rock. But as I've gotten older, like my musical taste hasn't like ossified, you know, like I've been able to expand, like listening to different genres, newer artists, you know, and I haven't really listened to a lot of classic rock. And today, like, I just, I don't know. I got in my car and my phone just started playing automatically Android auto. And it was like Mm. classic rock. It was, um, what do you call it? It was dire straits, um, sultans of swing. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the Sultans of Swing came on, and then the guitar solo came on. Is that considered on. classic rock? Yeah, that's yeah. classic rock, 100, okay. 100%. Hmm. Um, and it was fucking awesome. So that's what I got nostalgic about. It was about, like, you know, right. like classic rock and thinking back to, like, when I was started listening to classic rock and thinking back to some times that I had listening to classic rock. And while I was having those thoughts, you know, at the same time I was having – those other thoughts about, you know. Yeah, sometimes I sit back and I wonder, why can't I wear white after Labor Day? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you looked back. Speaking and Speaking of <laughs> being unable to confront your emotions, Scott. Uh, I'm glad you didn't look back at the classic rock saying, well, what the fuck did I waste all my time listening to that shit for? I'm glad it was a, it was a good feeling. It was a good, like a good period and a good, yeah, ch- classic rock. It's classic for a reason, yo, is by far, I would say top to bottom, the best decade, like that period of time from like 1968 to like 1977, 1978. Yo man, it was fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It was ridiculous. Today, Fucking artists come out with like an album, and then they come out with an album like ten years later. Back then, motherfuckers were releasing albums like fucking like Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. That was like their eleventh fucking album, mm. and that came out like seven years after they started recording. I don't consider them classic rock though. The Beatles, they're in the classic rock genre. I get it. Classic rock is a massive umbrella, and within the classic rock genre, there's subgenres like progressive, like you know, but. They've got their own, own little dark alley down there. They are their own genre. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I don't know. You just sound like like every aging man about the, being nostalgic about his generation of music being the best. You don't think like 16, 17 year olds today is going to say the music from like the 2020 to like 2030 was the best? You don't think that's going to happen? I don't accept your premise because... I don't know what they listen to. Is their Garbage. musical taste I don't know. <laughs> is their musical taste extensive? So in other words, like I'm not saying that closed off not listening to music today. You know what I'm saying? Like I, got you. I, I got listen you. to today's like music. I will take you saying that more than I would take the average aging out motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. classic rock is fucking the shit. The shit. The shit. I will go song for song. You name any fucking genre of song, and I will fucking trump that shit with a fucking classic rock song. Believe that. <laughs> Believe think, that. I don't want to get. I don't, I don't want to go too far into this. But where do you think the term trumping came from? Uh, cards. Yeah, but why the word trump? The trump card. Why? Yeah, but why the name Trump? Why the word Trump? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. You think it has to do with Trump's dad? Do I look like a fucking etymologist to you? Sometimes, sometimes you are. Sometimes you wear that hat. God damn, man! Always dragging the show down, making mistakes, and fucking previously <laughs> <laughs> didn't take me long to cash that check. Spe- spe- <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the atomic bomb, that brings us to Ruth One, man. We're gonna get right back to the show, but before we do, we'd like to invite you to come visit our Patreon. Each week, we discuss a new topic at the intersection of society and religion. We explore the encroachment of religion onto secular institutions, such as schools, workplaces, and government. In addition, 
We'll investigate whether religion practices what it preaches. So, after this episode, head on over to patreon.com slash libel to Bible and join in the conversation. And now, back to the show. Oh, we're doing Ruth 1 already? Yeah, man, already? Oh, Scott wants to get on with it. Get Scott, on with it Scott, Scott, Scott's, Scott's going to plow through. He's done with the chit-chat in the beginning of the show. <laughs> Alimalek's family goes to Moab. Alimalek. So the transition from atomic bomb to the book was Moab, mother of all bombs, like the atomic bomb. Oh, Even okay. though they're, they're, the they're actual separate bombs. weapons, but they, you know, still. Why don't you tell our young Gen Zers and millennials what the mother of all bombs was? Still is. It's the. Uh, it's the. Most powerful weapon in the American arsenal that's not nuclear. It's the most powerful conventional weapon. It's nicknamed the mother of all bombs. See, I first heard about it in the Iraq War, yes? Was that like when they... That or the daisy cutter. I think you mentioned the was daisy cutter. Was that the one that like those. drives through the ground? Like, and that's then a bunker like, buster. Oh, that's man. a bunker buster. Yeah. But the Moab Think about actually how much <laughs> money we spend on fucking figuring out how to kill motherfuckers. You that's, know what I mean? That's why we're the best. That's why we're the best. The best, man. So you want to go to Moab with a uh, Elimelech's family? Sure, Scott. And why should they be in an Elimelech and when we've already had an Abimelech? Like Elima- it's, it's, it's they cool. do this on purpose to confuse people, and that's what gives them an excuse to have like rabbis and priests and, and like councils clergy, and and right? Fucking, all that you got it wrong. They get uh. together at their Elks convention. They hire like local hookers. <laughs> you know what goes on, Scott. <laughs> Not those imported hookers. <laughs> so you want to get into it, man? Yeah, we're going to get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm waiting right. on you. So in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And I'm a sorry. certain man of... Be- what? I'm a stickler. You know me. Ruth won. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alimalek's family goes to Moab. Ruth won. Thank you. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. I thought if the judges were so great, how come uh, there's a whole famine in the land while like the judges are... Uh, excuse me. They were the local prostitutes. Yeah. Uh, the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Eph- Ephratites. Eph- Ephratites, Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, Naomi, damn it, I can't read, God damn, Scott. died, and she was left with her two sons. These two, these took Moab wives. Holy fuck, <laughs> Scott! What is happening? I'm gonna get it together, man. I'm working on it, man. Jesus Christ! Uh, Can somebody in the audience pick it up from? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, I got it from here. I mean, I'm assuming we all have our Bibles in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> these took Moab wives. The name of the one Moabite. W- the name of the Moabite. What did I say? You said Moab. Oh, yeah, you know what? Fine. Moab, right, Moabite, right. Mobatisi, Mobatit, whatever, man. I gotcha. You say Canaanite, I say right. Canaanite. Yeah. You you read the word correctly, I just pronounce any word I want. It's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> the, these took Moab wives. Scott, if it would be easier, you can just make up words. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? All right, then don't correct me if I'm making up all words. All right, that's true. The I name of the one was Oprah, and the name of the other Ruth. <laughs> Why is that funny? It's Orpa. <laughs> oh, it's Orpa. <laughs> I'm going to have to read this whole passage. Uh, uh, and the other name was uh, uh, Rob. I mean, Ruth. Uh, <laughs> Orpa. <laughs> when they had lived about there about 10 years, both Malon and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. All right. Can we yeah, you gotta stop re- for a second? Yeah, they got to summarize it because I don't know what anything I just read. I'm going to summarize know. this. Yeah. Right. We're introduced to Ruth. Yeah. Everything else doesn't matter. It really doesn't. <laughs> they introduced us to this man and woman who had boys. These two boys went to live somewhere else. Mm-hmm. They took on wives from that place. Mm-hmm. And one of those wives was Ruth. Oh, and then those two boys died. So that's it. Like, it's we're just introduced to Ruth. 
So we know that Ellen Melick is like the grandfather of this Ruth woman. Yeah. What's funny is here, when they had lived there about 10 years, both Mal- Malon and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her son, uh, two sons and her husband. They're talking about the woman. I guess Naomi. They're actually talking about Naomi, right? But this thing's about Ruth, so why do we even care? I don't even know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, can you show me where you are? Which uh, section? The whole no, there's a whole first section, man. That I just read, man. Oh, all right. That's no, not, not a big deal, man. All right. Naomi and her Moabite daughters-in-law. Then, she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So this fucking Naomi. All the men are dead, right? Her husband, Naomi's husband, and her two sons are dead. And now it's just her, Orpah, <laughs> and Ruth. Yeah. Okay. So that's where we're at, right? Yeah, it's just the yeah, women. Yeah. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Oh, maybe I shouldn't be so snarky. (laughs) The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them. And they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Gross. (laughs) Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. What what the fuck does that have to do with them, like, fucking going with her? (sighs) I don't know. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? I got to say, I don't condone this, but... I see what she's doing. At this point, neither of the daughters would be wrong if they grabbed her by her fucking cuffs and like slapped her around a little bit and told her to fucking calm down because she's being hysterical. Mm. I'm not condoning that happens. Mm. Hysterical, huh? And I'm not saying I wouldn't be in a bush peeking through <laughs> with my pants around my ankles while this broad slapping up this other broad. I'm not saying that. <sighs> so, what am I saying, Scott? Yeah, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> what do you have to say about this, Scott? This whole scene. You, you like milfing laws and the daughters <laughs> <laughs> having some hey, pillow fights? Listen. Ah. <sighs> What's what's this whole scene? Why why all of a sudden does she not want them with her? Uh, wh- why don't you why don't you go back to like verse thirteen, finish the paragraph right. out, and then we'll we'll talk all about right. it. So I'm gonna even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. So she's saying, I'm too old now to be of use to anybody, so turn away from me. She, yeah, she's feeling a little sorry for herself, but for herself. But I also think she's she's feeling a certain way about these daughters. He, 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 she doesn't want to see them waste their lives away. Go get remarried. Go have a life. Go, you know, don't, I'll be okay. Why wouldn't they so be able like, to remarry like in Judah? You seen them dudes in Judah? <laughs> Ain't nobody worth anything in Judah. <laughs> She's like, girl, you don't need no small dick, man. <laughs> Go back to Moab. Really? Well, yeah, the mother of all something that begins with a B. Yeah. All right. So, so she said, look, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said... Why is this in song verse now? But before you get to that, I'm going to yeah. say, all right, so Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. I thought maybe she would just be holding on to her leg. Oh, I don't want to leave you. I don't want to leave you. And that would have been settled. Apparently, no, 
the other daughter left a while ago, and Ruth's still clinging to her. Yeah, I don't think it's clinging, like, yeah. actual, like, literal clinging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait. When they said they wept aloud again, Man. you ever watch, like, the Peanuts, like, uh, cartoons? Sure. Like, when they cry, their head goes back, and, like, the, yes. the, the water comes out of their eyes. Like a fan. Yes. That's how I'm picturing these yes. two. All right, that is funny. Because the second you started saying peanuts, I started rolling my eyes. I was like, oh, my God. It is the least funny fucking, like, show ever. The music. I hated everything about that fucking uh, show. I know. The only thing I liked was, like, the adults that were like, want, 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 yeah. want. That was funny. And that, what you just mentioned, is funny. All right. All right, you pulled it off. I did. You pulled off a triple Lundy. And you pulled it out. What are you doing over there? (laughs) So she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you, to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord do thus to me. And more as well. If even death parts me from you. So it was written in like song verse. And you kind of made it into like spoken word. Yeah, (laughs) man. Death um, poetry. Death jam poetry, son. Yeah. Yeah. So um, why is she so attached to her? Maybe she just likes her. Maybe they get get on. Is, Is that what the Brits say? They get on. Could be a couple of things. Is that what the Brits say? The Brits—they like they get on with somebody. Like, this, like they're a, getting on. Yeah, that, sure, okay. Term, right? yeah. Taking so, the piss. Take what? <laughs> Taking the piss. <laughs> uh, uh, right. It, it's a saying that makes no sense because if you're literally thinking about it. What does that mean? Like someone's like I've you're at heard- a urinal and someone's like taking your piss from you. I've, n- I've never and heard the term. It's like basically uh, making fun of someone or like making lighthearted fun right. in a non like um, non aggressive way. Right, right. Yeah, you're yeah. not trying to be an asshole. You're just like Josh. You're breaking balls. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what's it called? Taking a piss. Taking the piss. So now, if you're the one breaking my balls, am I taking the piss from you? I'm taking the piss. On me. <laughs> I'm taking the piss by joshing with you. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Okay, so like <laughs> it's also possible that Yahweh is sort of like making Ruth do this. I am it is so, the book of Ruth. I'm so sick of that shit. I'm sick of that shit, man. Just that, that Yahweh hard in his ex heart. Yeah, like, fuck like you, man. Like, God's got nothing better to do. Like, he's going to shut off the game to fucking go deal with Naomi and Ruth. Come on. You know what, Scott? I'm starting to suspect that you don't have faith in your heart. I have faith of the heart. Faith of the heart? There's a bad uh, Star Trek Enterprise theme song. Anyway, everything comes back. I'm making a lot of Star Trek references. You know why? You know why? Because I watched the last episode. It's like either Rocky references (laughs) or Star Trek references. I I watched the final episode of Star Trek Picard tonight, so I think I'm feeling. Oh, so you you caught up? You watched it? Yeah. So I'm feeling a little nostalgic. So you like the way like it ended? No, not at all. I like the fact. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had a whole thing about nostalgia. Yeah. You said nothing through the whole thing. And now you're popping some shit like you just watched Star Trek the next gen or whatever it is and fucking you're feeling nostalgic, I Picard. I was, I was feeling nostalgic. But I didn't want to I, I didn't want to make it about me, man. I was making let you make it about you. Now we've moved no, on. No, I we're was just... trying to like have like a conversation where you <laughs> contributed like fifty percent to it. That's what a conversation is, Scott. I say something, you say something back. <laughs> I was I was I was Were you little... happy with the way they ended Picard? No, not really. All right. Why? Yeah. Because I don't think I'd be happy with any ending. But, spoiler alert, I'll tell you this right now, if you don't mind. Nope, no complaints. His son. Um, I, I, That was all nonsense, too. And by the way, his son all spoke nonsense. with, like, like a like a deep British accent. But he, like, hasn't been on Earth. Like, you don't get born with a British accent just because you're British. You know what well, I'm saying? Well, that's like Beverly Crusher probably, like, implanted that, like, in his brain. You know, yeah, they have that kind of shit. goofy. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, basically, they... What do you think? Picard's going to love someone who doesn't have, like, his classically trained Shakespearean fucking voice? Yeah. Dude, I had to put on the subtitles a couple, occasionally. And why does Picard talks? talk like that if he's Jean-Luc Picard and he grew up, like, fucking making wine on a French vineyard? I don't know. Why does he talk like fucking Hamlet? I don't know, man. Huh. I don't know. Huh? I don't know. But, no, it was a, they, they took aspects of Battlestar Galactica, the reboot. Yeah. 
and like blowing up the Death Star in Star Wars. It was like like when the writers wrote this, I was I was asking, I was like, do they not say well, I'm just gonna rip this shit off? Like they had to know I've seen this somewhere before. It was lame. It was, it was not original. It wasn't it fucking original. It sounds like a big pile of shit because if you are shitting on it, nah. it must be terrible. Because you're looking to love it. I am you wanna I love looking it. to love you it. You want to yeah. love it. Yeah. You loved every uh, one of those goddamn Star Wars prequels coming out of the theater. You uh, just ignored and denied I I, everything I, I, in front of your fucking eyes. I was in such denial. I can't even watch any, yeah. any of those prequels. Man. Well, we were in that fucking I know. theater. You we called saw it, it. We you saw know. it at the Zigfield. So we were no. in line with all the fucking nerds. We had like those tickets yeah. to like the premieres. Yeah. Forty-five minutes into that pod race, <laughs> that was forever, or however long it was. was forever. Halfway through it, I was like, "Nah, man, this is just to sell video games uh, or whatever. This is just to sell products." I was like, like you said, I wanted to love it, and I denied, 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 and now I can't. I couldn't even imagine. Like, if I see him on TV, I don't even stop to see what yeah. scene it is. Just, you know who likes it? Who? Millennials. Do they really? Yeah, because they were like your age. When you saw Star Wars. So what do they think of the original So Star the problem Wars? is we were old already. It wasn't for us. Right. right. We wanted like a continuation of like, you know, all that other stuff. But I don't know, Scott. I don't know what to tell you. Kids love it. That's why it. I didn't want to talk about nostalgia, man. I just want to let you have it, man. I was so <laughs> beaten up over Picard, man. Like I didn't want to, I didn't want to cry, man. I didn't want to cry. Uh, I'm sorry, Again. man. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? She said to them, oh, this is like, I'm not doing this in spoken word, man. It's the same setup, though, man. <laughs> nah, you want me to do it? <laughs> nah, you got to do it, man. Come nah, yeah, you do it, man. Nah, come on. All you right. can do it. Come on. Call me no longer Naomi. Call me Mara. Why? 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 Wait, why? Why are we doing this again? Oh, shit. For the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has dealt harshly with me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? Uh, okay, and call you verse. Naomi because that's your fucking name? Yeah, I don't understand. I don't, I don't, Why wouldn't we call you Naomi? Maybe back then if you changed your name, your luck changed, man. Maybe she should keep the fucking name of the loser that got her into this situation in the first place. Who's the loser that got her in that situation? Naomi. So keep that fucking name. Wait, 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 wait. Now I'm, I'm confused. What do you mean? She's like, oh, woe is me. I'm like wretched. I'm the fucking scum of the earth. Who would want to be with me? I'm miserable. I shouldn't be Naomi anymore. And it's like, nah, you should be Naomi. Because Naomi's the piece of shit that fucking did this to you. And you're that piece of shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's all right. That's a piece of shit. Somebody just, just, somebody you know what it kick is? her right in the fucking head. Honestly, I don't even know. I, I just know. see it's a feminine name. It's a woman. You know me. I, <laughs> I got to go off. <laughs> so Naomi returned together with Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, who came back with her from the country of Moab. They came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. So wait, wait. Why was the whole town stirred because of them? Maybe they felt bad, like that all the men died. And all right, end of Ruth one. Maybe they are. arrived naked, we are <laughs> and the whole town was, you know, oh shit, look at this. What's going on here? All right, so that's the end of Ruth one. How do you feel about Ruth one? <laughs> I felt like it was a lot about nothing. I felt like we were introduced to Ruth. I don't know what the significant. You know what the problem is? This is the backstory, man. This is the big. You know, this is. The Backstory. But you don't know what's significant in this backstory. Like, we could be losing a lot of the detail in our tomfoolery. All right, but I think, I don't think we're going back to the old format, man. We're not doing it. I like this format, man. All right. No, that's not what I meant. I didn't mean, uh, like, if we had prepped ahead of time. So you never know what counts, man. That's why you have to live every moment like it's your last, Russ, because one day it will be the fuck are you talking about scott <laughs> you have like a fucking pain in your thigh you start planning like your funeral <laughs> how do you know about that pain in my thigh man you can see it you can see that pain hold on i gotta check my pulse <laughs> it's a little fast <laughs> oh hypochondria is funny to laugh at oh it's funny all right ruth two ruth meets boaz now naomi had a kinsman on her husband's side 
a prominent rich man of the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain behind someone in whose sight I may find favor. She said to her, Go, my daughter. So she went. She came and gleaned in the field behind the reapers. I'm going to read that sentence again because okay. I don't think you understand how sexy it is. <laughs> she, okay. she came and gleaned in the field behind the reapers. Mm-hmm. As it happened, she came to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Can they have fucking put in a more tongue twisty fucking name than Elimelech? E L I M E L E C H. For the listeners, go write that shit out and then say it. Yeah, it's almost like this was not written for the ease of the white conquerors that would be reading it 2,000 years later. You know what? I'm tired of other cultures not conforming. To our ways. It's ridiculous, man. It's like Star Trek. We always have to like bend the knee to other people's fucking alien cultures, and they never have to give a fuck Bullshit, about like man. our shit. They should have re fucking did when, once once we rose to power, every name should have been talked Bob, Harry, Chris, Joe. You know. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. You know what? We should make it our mission to fly around the fucking universe, conquering planets and assimilating them. Into our fucking collective. Hmm. That should be our personal <laughs> objective or like society's, uh, humanity's objective. Listen, I'm not a doer. I'm a thinker, all right? Because, <laughs> yo, I'll close this laptop right now and start building that spaceship. I'm just, I'm just an idea, man. <laughs> just then, Boaz came from Bethlehem. So while this cutie's out in the field trying to spot, like, you know, trying to look for, like, a groom for a man, someone to marry her. Just then, Boaz came from Bethlehem. You think he like came riding upon like a steed, fiery steed, fiery (laughs) steed? I need a hero. He said to the reapers, "The Lord be with you." They answered, "The Lord bless you." Then Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers, "To whom does this young woman belong?" The man who was in charge of the reapers, answered, She is the Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the reapers. So she came, and she has been on her feet from early this morning until now without resting even for a moment. All right, so now let me get this straight. She goes into the field. No, no, just, just, just. The reapers are the guys who are basically cutting down the shit, right? And yeah, collecting yeah, it. the guys, yeah. And she's taking the scraps that are laying behind. That's what she's doing, right? Okay. All right. Just, just, no, just wondering. See, I thought she went there to, like, look for a man. See, I thought when, in my head, she was just going there to, like, spin around in the, in the, in the, in the harvest and, like, you know, be one with nature, have a mindfulness moment, you know, just be alone with her thoughts. So that would be a good thought to have. But if you go back to Ruth 2, verse 2, okay? And Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, quote, Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain behind someone in whose sight I I may find favor. So to me, at first, it seemed like she wants to go in the field to like vagrant about to sort of like be seen by someone Mm. with whom she can find favor, like a man, like, you know, she's putting herself out there. But now I'm thinking it's a combination maybe of what you said. Maybe she's like willing to give someone a handy or maybe like a blowy (laughs) in exchange for some of these fucking ears of green. Like that, like I said, I didn't say any of that. (laughs) It's the logical conclusion uh, okay. to what you said. Like she's trying you said she's trying to like steal some like grains or whatever, right? And I'm saying she might be saying 
that she wants to find someone who whose favor she will fall into who will give her like that grain and we know what that means right like how would she fall into someone's favor like within like 30 minutes i don't know good conversation okay flirtatious eye contact okay cute who's, giggle who's naive now all scott right, all right <sighs> ruth 2 verse 8 then boaz said to ruth now listen my daughter do not go to glean another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Giggity. Hmm. Keep your eyes on the field that is being reaped and follow behind them. I have ordered the young men not to bother you. If you get thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. Then she fell prostrate. Prostrate. <laughs> she fell on her prostate? <laughs> She fell prostrate with her face to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me when I am a foreigner? I don't know. You're in my field creeping around my guys. How would he even know that she's a foreigner? You know what I'm saying? Like, they're all the same fucking people. Like, how would he know? But Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told me. How you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. <laughs> Creepy stalker much? Uh, may the Lord reward you for your deeds, and may you have a full reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Then she said, May I continue to find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, even though I am not one of your servants. So basically, here's what I'm getting. I mean, it's a four-chapter book. Mm -hmm. We're a chapter and a half in, okay? I'm getting, like, the fact that she's this loyal person, and she's now being rewarded for this loyalty, you know? Even after her mother-in-law was like, No, oh, I'm such a wretch. Please, I'm hideous. Turn away from me. You know, she was like, No, All no. Right. So Ruth, so Ruth really isn't a clinger on. She's more of like a nurturer. Like she's trying to take care of her 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 dead husband's mother. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fine. That's that's the sense that I'm Fine. getting. But how did this guy just get back from Bethlehem and he's got the whole scoop on his woman? <laughs> like I know all about you. Well, a good lord, you know, knows his serfs. He talks to his serfs. He gets all the info. Yeah, but did she accidentally go into his field? Oh, I don't know. Wasn't she supposed to be like, ah, whatever. Does it matter? No, nah, it doesn't matter. Who cares? What if she accidentally did it or well, not I feel, accidentally? I feel like she kind of like creeped into the wrong field. Like she was, went to, she was going out to her field and ended up in his field. But uh, does she have a field? I think, I don't know. I, th I think I thought I read that. Okay. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come here and eat some of this bread and dip your morsel in the sour wine. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to read that again. Uh, okay. He said, come here. Come here. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> come here. <laughs> That's four times now. Shh. <laughs> sorry. Good. I'm trying to read. <laughs> At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come here and eat some of this bread and dip your morsel in the sour wine. So she sat beside the reapers, and he heaped up for her some parched grain. Mmm. That is a good I, grain. I know at the end of the day, when I, what really gets me going is some <laughs> parched grain. It's a she, different time. She ate until she was satisfied. So like half a spoon. <laughs> I'm good. She ate until she was satisfied. And she had some leftover. No shit, she had some <laughs> leftover. When she got up to glean, what does this mean now? Now, like, now, what is yeah, glean? I got to tell you, man. I was just thinking the same thing. I was like, do I not know what this means? Extract from various sources. So to glean means to extract. So they're extracting wheat. So they're like, what? So she's like in the fields and like stripping like wheat or some shit. Grains. Oh, okay. Gleaning is the, uh, the process of like taking the grain from the sheaves, maybe? Yeah, okay. okay. All right. When she got up to glean, Boaz instructed his young men, let her glean even among the standing sheaves and do not reproach her. You must also pull out, pull out some handfuls for her from the bundles and leave them for her to glean and do not rebuke her. All right, so I mean, she, all her loyalty is being rewarded, I would say. Yeah, yeah. 
Her reputation, yeah. her good reputation preceded her. You can eat some of this parched grain and go get yourself some more if you want. We won't break your balls over it. And I got to tell you, now I'm starting to get worried. Are you? Yes, because in this book, no good deed has ever gone unpunished. Oh. Damn. Like I'm waiting for like the other shoe to drop. All right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like rape. Yahweh, something bad is about to befall this poor woman. And, and you're a woman, and you're the name of the book right. that we're reading. And like everyone so. knows you now, you know what I mean? Nah. I'm waiting for like a stalker to like, maybe a fucking Benjaminite shows up and just kidnaps her for a wife, because they're allowed. Maybe this guy like says, ha ha, I'm not Boaz, and he pulls his face <laughs> oh, off, and he's a different face underneath. And... <laughs> it's her husband. <laughs> he's like, you thought I was dead. <laughs> I just didn't like you. So Ruth You're 17. <laughs> so she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah oh. of barley. She picked it up and came into the town, and her mm. mother-in-law saw how much she had gleaned. Mm. So I guess an ephah is a lot. Then she took out and gave her what was left over after she herself had been satisfied. Oh. Her mother-in-law <laughs> said to her, Where did you glean today? And where, where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Can I say something? Sure. These people talk like fucking idiots. Yeah, they're All right. their conversations sound fucking moronic to me. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you get that green? <laughs> that's a legit question, I guess. Right. I guess. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. So she told her mother-in-law, with whom she had worked, saying, The name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, the man is a relative of ours, one of our nearest kin. And here's the shoe. <laughs> then Ruth the Moabite said, he even said to me, stay close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. All my harvest. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is better, my daughter, that you go out with his young women. Otherwise, someone might bother you in another field. So she stayed close to the young women of Boaz gleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvest, and she lived with her mother-in-law. Okay. Why do they have to repeat, repeatedly say da the daughter-in-law or Ruth the Moabite? Like, we know this already. Yeah. It's like just it's because they know I have trouble reading and focusing, so they want to fucking put more words for me to trip over. It's <laughs> For me, the problem isn't you tripping over the words because that's half the show to me at this point <laughs> is just making fun of you tripping over the words. To me... It, like, buries all of, like, the actual important information yeah. in this sea of irrelevant, like, names and references. I don't understand I it. I thought Boaz originally said, stick close to my women, my young women. That's what he said. And then here in verse 21, he even said to me, stay close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. I guess he could have said both. All right. Whatever. Hey, man, we're halfway through season eight. <laughs> <laughs> we got time to keep going? What do you want to do, Scott? You want to... We can call this right now. Nah, it doesn't feel like we've been doing this too long. Yeah. You want to keep going? You want to finish it off? Uh, it doesn't... I'm, I'm skipping ahead just to see what, how much All more right, content Scott wants to here. see. We're, we're, uh, about, we're a little under an hour in right now. A little under we, an hour in. We could probably make this a one and done if we wanted to. We could. So what do you, what do you, how are you feeling about it? I'm feeling like, you know, maybe leave it on a cliffhanger. <laughs> What's the cliffhanger? <laughs> Who the fuck is Ruth and why is there a book named after her? We're already halfway through and we've learned nothing about her. What have we learned about her? What All does right, she look like, let's, Scott? Let's see what we, does Ruth look like? Why does that even matter, man? What? You didn't ask, what does Moses look like? You really don't understand why it matters? No, no, I don't understand, man. Well, when I'm in the bathroom <laughs> later with my eyes closed. What do the people like look like? Why do you think I'm reading this book, Scott? Have you not read how sexy it is? Um, um, you know, it's not until I hear you read it that I realize how sexy it I is. I mean, you know, when on. I read it, it's kind of bland and boring. But when, when you when you put it to words. There you go. That's yeah. a money making scheme. You make like you read like you hire porn stars to read the Bible like in sexy voices. That could be a that could be a, like a backup project, like a 
you go, Scott. See, we do. Just go with it, Scott. I know your instinct is to argue and like poke holes in like everything I say. <laughs> yeah, that's. But just go with the comedy. Yeah. All right. 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 Ruth and Boaz at the threshing floor. Oh, I thought we were gonna do it. We're not gonna do it. I thought you said you wanted to end it. I got on cliffhanger. Yeah, but I don't know. You sort of like maybe convinced me. I, <laughs> I didn't really try. No. I think I didn't, um, all right. Yeah. All right. We can you got to change now. gears now. No. I, I You're out of it. You're out listen, of it. Listen, I was never like fully clutched into the proper gear today. Anyway, so let's uh, we can. Keep so that's going. what I'm saying. So maybe we save some of that fucking, you oh. know. And finish it off another time when you're involved. Is, is there enough material? No, it's not that I wasn't involved. It's just, there's only two paragraphs on the next chapter, and then there's one, two, three. There's really not much left here, man. Let's. I say we just do it. You you just want to do it? Just plow through this one? Plow You've through You've convinced Ruth. me, man. Plow through Ruth. She is in the field. <laughs> All right. All right, Ruth. The Book of Ruth 3. <laughs> Ruth and Boaz at the threshing floor. You think this is where he makes his move on her? Oh, they're at the threshing floor. Yeah. yeah. Not the thrashing. Floor, <laughs> oh. The thrush. Yeah. Is that like where you like shake out like the fucking The threshing. We, we it was it's, the in the, it's in the Or like you fucking list. sift it or some bullshit. Probably, yeah. Threshing. It's like where you step on the grapes. Separate grain from a plant, typically yeah. with a flail or by the action of a revolving Mechanism. All right. So, All right. Wanna, so it's kind of like the the cotton gin, like that kind of shit. Oh yeah, yeah but, the cotton yeah. gin. Yeah. What? No, not the cotton gin. Well, I always because the I cotton gin get... separates like the cotton from like the fucking. Yeah. You know what it is? It's it's really weird. I get like this actual response, like physical response when I hear thing like, when I hear the cotton gin. Yeah. I immediately flash to slavery and how fucked up and blah blah blah. That's the word cotton gin does that to me. Okay. It's weird, right? I mean, they are intertwined. Yeah, of the course. The cotton gin helped, like, fucking sustain slavery longer because slavery was dying out mm. until the invention of the cotton gin because it wasn't worth uh, paying for all those slaves because they weren't making up enough in the fucking cotton that they were selling. And when the cotton gin was invented, like, in the 1830s, it was like, boom, all of a yeah, sudden, like, yeah. fucking, you needed slaves to pick the yep. cotton so that the fucking cotton gin can separate the fucking, you know. Yeah. Fuck the cotton the gin is what I'm saying, man. Yeah. Who invented that? I forget. <sighs> Eli Whitney. Eli Whitney? I have no idea. That name just rolled no. off my <laughs> I have no idea who that is. All right. I don't know why. I can't believe I don't remember who invented the cotton right. gin. So are, right. we, are we doing this or we're not Yeah, let's this? do it. Ruth and Boaz at the threshing floor. You want to start? Naomi, Ruth 3. <laughs> Naomi. And what the fuck? I thought she was going to be known as Mara. So they changed her name but then didn't. So that's like when God told fucking Jacob, oh, by the way, your name's Israel now? Yeah. But it's stuck. And then they kept calling him Jacob sometimes, and then Israel other times, oh, and then a, Jacob, and it, it was no, like uh, back and forth. Makes sense, though, if you think about it, the time. Different the authors. Word, the, plus, the word hadn't spread yet. Oh, I don't go by Jacob anymore, man. I'm Israel now. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, right. Then, then you had some pricks dead naming him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. Ruth and Boaz at the threshing floor. Naomi, her mother in law, said to her, Again, we know it's her mother in law. Different author. My daughter. I need to seek some security for you so that it may, w- may be well with you. Now, here's our kinsman, Boaz, with those young women you have been working. See? He is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now, wash and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and go down to the threshing floor, but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. She said to her, all that you say, I will do. Stop. Yeah. What the f- Is this like a courtship ritual? Or is this like she is like giving herself as a slave? I don't know. What, this is crazy. And they mention that he's, Boaz is a kinsman to them. Closer than they think. All right. What is that about? Are they going to reveal this nature of this relationship? In all seriousness, Scott, I need you to consider the fact that it's quite possible that at the time that this book or this part was written, this was like a normal thing that a woman would get dressed in like her Sunday best and show up to like your farmhouse or whatever. It's a guy's job. Spy on you until you <laughs> fall asleep and then like plant herself at your feet like a dog and just like prostrate herself to you and like give herself to whatever wish you want. That's weird. 
And it's apparently it's tradition because the mother-in-law is passing this down. Yes, so yeah, like, go, right. Yeah. She's like, this is, I'll tell you, this is what all the women in my village used to do. Uncover his feet and lie down. <laughs> it's fucking I crazy. Ain't su- I ain't sucking his toes, man. <laughs> I ain't doing it. We've got... He's standing on the threshing floor all day. That. Women complain. And they should. Listen, women still have a long way to go. You know what I'm saying? To achieve, like, full, like, equality. But think about how far <laughs> women have come from this <laughs> to just being able to swipe left to get rid of, like, a guy that they don't like, you know, on, a, on their phone screen. Yeah, I'm going to tell you a little something about me. I'm waking up immediately. You can't go near my feet without me giggling. Like, you can't. Like, I have the most ticklish feet. It's insane. You know how you're not supposed to be able to tickle yourself? Yeah. I can tickle myself. Yeah, I believe it. You like uh. to laugh. You're a laugher. <laughs> It hides like the pain. <laughs> it pushes it pushes the pain down. So she went down to the threshing floor and did just as her mother-in-law had instructed her. When Boaz had eaten and drunk and was in a contented mood, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. Then she came stealthily and un- uncovered his feet and lay down. At midnight, the man was startled and turned over, and there, lying at his feet, was a woman! Exclamation point. He said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your cloak over your servant, for you are next of kin. He said, may you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. This last instance I'm of sorry, your words. Yeah, okay. Next of kin has a footnote, and the footnote is next of kin, or one with the right to redeem. She's Whoa. giving him a coupon code. Wow. And she's giving him the right to redeem that coupon code. This and that coupon one. code is in her vag. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm saying. So um were you checking stats lately? Like, what's our female clientele look like these days? <laughs> <laughs> it's non existent. That's why I don't uh, give a fuck oh, okay, anymore. Right. Yeah. He said Hey, hey, hey. It's locker room talk. Yeah. It's, it's true. locker room talk. It's true. You, get, you grab him by the coupon, the <laughs> coupon, no matter where it is. He said, may you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. The last instance of your loyalty is better than the first. You have not gone after young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not be afraid. I will do for you all that you ask, for all the assembly of my people know that you are a worthy woman. I think she wants him to be her father or, like, to take care of her and, like, marry her off. Okay, we'll see how that plays out. All right. But now, though it is true that I am a near kinsman, there is another kinsman more closely related than I. Remain this night and in the morning, if he will act of next act as next of kin for you, good, let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, if, but if he is not willing to act as next of kin for you, then as the Lord lives, I will act as next of kin for you. Lie down until the morning. You might be right about this. And close your eyes and ignore everything that happens from now until the time you wake up. No, I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting the feeling. Maybe something like you said. And maybe someone is closer in kin that could be better suited to help her find her way in in the world. Maybe. Because he hasn't said he didn't do anything pervy here either. So now do you think like she's really not all that benevolent benevolent? Maybe she's been plotting this whole time, like, I'm gonna fucking Mm. You know what I mean? Like, pretend like I give a fuck about this old bag. Oh, you think like he's an old dude? Like, uh, what was No, it? I mean her mother-in-law. Like, I'm going to pretend like I'm fucking oh. all loyal to my mother-in-law. People, like, fall in love with me. How can they not? I'm all, all fucking charming. That's, that's and good. I'm like, you know, I haven't been married for too long, so my vag is still, like, you know, my vagine is nice and, like, tight still. All right. Yeah. All right. So, it's uh, like a puckered she's, lips. She's, she's playing a long game here, then. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm not... Scott, see, you jump right to the worst that she is. I'm just asking the questions. You're jump. You're like fucking Tucker Carlson's audience. <laughs> He's just asking questions. Just asking it's questions. the audience that's jumping to conclusions. You're right. You're right. So I'm. So you're Tucker Carlson. <laughs> I'm Tucker Carlson's audience. I'm just asking questions. Right. Is it possible that she had this as a long game in mind? Yeah, possibly, I'm still possibly. leaning towards like she's just a nice lady. She's she, Ruth. Maybe she's Have you ever s- known a Ruth who's not a nice lady? Ruth. It's such a, like, you know. It is a nice name. It's a nice name. It's, a nice name. it's like a little Jewish lady's name. Yeah. My aunt. My aunt's name is Ruth. Is, that is actually, it? Yeah. You have a Jew aunt? 
I mean, <laughs> I a Jewish aunt? I don't, wow. <laughs> I don't believe she's Jewish, no. I mean, she might be. I, I, don't, I don't know. All right. All right. It's all right. For anyone who's new in the audience, it's all right. I'm a Jew. Yeah, all right. Be- I, my family was expelled from the USSR for being Jewish. So I, I got my fucking Jew card. Yeah, like the USSR even fucking existed. Fucking scumbags out there, bunch of anti-Semites nice. judging me nice. for being an anti-Semite. Yeah, nice fucking story you're telling. That. <laughs> got any proof of this? <laughs> so she lay at his feet until morning, but got but got up before one person could recognize another. For he said, it must not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. Then he I'm said... Sorry. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before one person could recognize. Oh, so they're in a room with other people. Are there like a whole bunch of people like sleeping on this threshing no, floor? No, you know what it was? Maybe he was the last guy on the threshing floor and he slept. He didn't want people walking in and seeing them sleeping together, even though it's not like a, not in a sexual way. Okay. That's, that, maybe. All right. Because it must not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. Then he said, bring the cloak you are wearing and hold it out. So she held it, and he measured out six measures, measures of barley and put it on her back. Then he went into the town. So he's using her as a mule now? <laughs> yeah, he just, weird. like, fucking put barley on her? Swallow his cocaine-filled <laughs> condom for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did just come back from, like, Bethlehem yeah. or something. You know what goes What's on. What's he doing there? Yeah. Yeah. She came, she came to her mother-in-law who said, how did things go with you, my daughter? Because she hasn't come home. He built like a whole fucking donkey cart out of weed, and now she's got to like take it back across the border. <laughs> Wasn't that a movie? That was the plot. The the like, up and smoke. Yeah, they're trying to get like stoned the whole movie, and meanwhile, they're driving around in a van yeah. like made of fucking pot. <laughs> oh, man. The whole movie is like them trying to score. Remember, yeah, they went to yeah. like cousin like whatever's house. Yeah. Was that the guy with the Vietnam vet guy that was all yes, fu- yes, Charlie he everywhere? Yeah, like the fucking huge like birthmark. He's like, don't look at his birthmark, and that's all he could stare at was the birthmark. And he's like, what are you looking at? <laughs> they go outside. He's like, the great outdoors. <laughs> she's just like, yeah, man, the great outdoors. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. Then she told her all that you know the who man that is, done- right? You know who that was? That's Tom Skerritt, bro. That's the fucking guy from fucking Top Gun. That was the Top Gun instructor that fucking flew with Maverick's dad. Yeah, you know what? When, you, when you mentioned Scarrett, I was bro. thinking for some reason Tackleberry for, from Police Academy. Nah, that guy's reason. a fucking idiot. <laughs> Tackleberry, that big dumb fucking dumb. <laughs> guy had no charisma. He was in the fucking every single goddamn Police Academy movie. That's well, how you could judge a person's charisma, by the way. First Police Academy movie, if they were in it, they had like charisma. Then... The less charisma they had, the more fucking Police Academy oh, movies they were forced right. to do. So, like, if you're still in Police Academy 6, no yeah. charisma. Yeah. Unless you're coming back for, like, 6. You weren't in the next 5, but you came back, like, as a, as like a you know, I don't know. Maybe. Like, for nostalgic reasons. If you're, like, a woman and you reach the age of 31 and you've aged <sighs> out of Hollywood, then you can come back to, like, earn a paycheck. Because you're obviously too old to play like Jack Nicholson's love interest. Of course. Because it's like a 50-year age gap. You know what I mean? We can't have that. That's stupid. Yeah. It's got to be a 60-year fucking age gap. Then she told her all that the man had done for her, saying, He gave me these six measures of barley, for he said, Do not go go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. She replied, Wait, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out, for the man will not rest but will settle the matter today. What the fuck are they talking about? Um, he gave her the grain. He told her the night before that he's going to inquire about some other dude that might be even more closely related because apparently these people can't fuck one another unless they're basically like brother and sister. I don't know, Scott. Okay, but the six measures of barley, she said, do not go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then she goes, wait, my daughter. It, like, um, I guess Maybe she's handling, handing her the barley. Is it like uh, a show of his commitment to her? Like a covenant? Yeah, like you will become my servant and I promise to take care of you. Okay, so we are three chapters out of the four chapters. Three chapters of the book of Ruth are done. We're 75% through the book. So far, like if none of this happened, like I don't see how it, how it affects like world religion. Anything. <laughs> like, 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 what? Who knows? Okay. Well, uh. maybe it ushered in an era of like sneaking into men's like workspaces and sleeping at their feet. Yeah, all right. The marriage, oh, 
the marriage of Boaz and Ruth. Son of a bitch. So we this just, is going to lead to a marriage. Shut up and rage. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What is this? Ruth 4. So this is the end, and they get married. Do you think... I, I, I think I know what it is. Uh, I'm not going to say it. You yeah, want me to say it? it? No, no, don't give it away. Write it down on a piece of paper. All right. And then we'll see if... Uh, I'll uh, write it on my do. phone. No, that's going to be dead space. I, I'll trust you. If you say this is exactly what I was thinking... No, nah, I'm going to write it on All my right. phone, bro. Do, 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 you don't have to make that music. You can like talk and like like start reading. All right. Ruth 4, The Marriage of Boaz and Ruth. No sooner had Boaz gone up to the gate and sat down there than, than the next of kin of whom Boaz had spoken came passing by. So Boaz said, come over, sit down here. And he went over and sat down. Let me sex traffic a woman for you. But then Boaz <laughs> took, did you finish writing down the note? Yeah. Then Boaz took 10 men of the elders of the town and said, sit down here. So they sat down. He then said to the next of kin, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land that belonged to our kinsman, Elimelech. So I thought I would tell you of it and say, buy it in the presence of those sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not, tell me so that I may know, for there is no one prior to you to redeem it. And I come after you. All right, so he said, I will redeem it. Boaz is probably mad. <laughs> then Boaz said, the day you acquire the field from the hand of Naomi, you are also acquiring Ruth. Aww. No backsies. <laughs> the Moabite, the widow of the dead man, to maintain the dead man's name on his inheritance. At this, the next of kin said, I cannot redeem it for myself without damaging my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Yeah, okay. so this is about like finding her a husband and like taking on like the land because I guess maybe women weren't allowed to own. But I thought, I thought in like Deuteronomy or Numbers or one of those like they did account for women being able to own property if remember like all these things had like like if they had that. a crushing fucking destruction of their marriage or their husband got like it, yeah. like this kind of situation. Yeah. She shouldn't need like a man. So, Boaz is a crafty bastard. Apparently, this is the high, this is the order of things. Next of kin means who's next in line that gets first dibs on the property. Boaz knew it wasn't him. He knew it was it's Rusty. It's the right of like succession. Right, right. Thank you. What did I say? Yeah, right of succession. You didn't say uh, anything. No. Think you were like, it's like, <laughs> duh. So, Boaz knew he wasn't number one, and he had to do the right thing. So, he brought the number one guy. He brought Bob over and said, Bob, you're, if you're going to bid on this, fine. I go next. And the guy said he was going to bid on it. And then Boaz... Until he heard about Ruth. Yeah, but now he's <laughs> Ruth's there. Boaz is playing a fucking game here, man. What's up with Ruth? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. They don't tell you what she looks like. Right. Does she have, like, fat ankles? Like, what's going on? Or maybe fat ankles were fucking in vogue at that time. Why wouldn't they be? All right. Uh, Ruth 4, verse 7. Now, this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging to confirm a transaction. The one took off a sandal and gave it to the other. This was the manner of attesting in Israel. Why? Why could there not be like a better way of attesting? Yeah, let me have Israel. the nastiest garment on your body and let me hold it. Let's and like it would, it would not make me want to engage in a deal if I had to take off my sandal and give it to you because now I'm sandalless. True. True. Yeah. Now, now, not only are my feet gonna get dirty, now I got to spend money on. A new sandal. Trust me, them sandals didn't keep any dirt off your feet. Your feet are dead, <laughs> filthy at this point. <laughs> All right. So when the next of kin, so when the next of kin said to Boaz, "Acquire it for yourself," he took off his sandal. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, "You are witnesses today that I have acquired from the hand of Naomi all that belonged to Elimelech." And all that belong to Chilean and Malon. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabite, the wife of Malon, to be my wife, to maintain the dead man's name on his inheritance, in order that the name of the dead may not be cut off from his kindred and from the gate of his native place. Today you are witnesses. Then all the people who were at the gate, along with the elders, said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. Oh, shit. Call back, son. Nice. Rachel and Leah. Nice. 
Leah's that ugly broad that he didn't want. The sister that he fucking got tricked at the banging first, but he (laughs) really wanted fucking Rachel. But Leah was the one that kept bearing him fucking kids when he was still Jacob. All right. Um, (laughs) May you produce children in Ephrath, in Ephrath, in Ephrath, in Ephrath, Ephratha is that's how you say it, right? E P H R A T H A H. I would have read it as Oprah. <laughs> Ephratha and bestow a name in Bethlehem. And though the children that the Lord will give you by this young woman through the children through the what and through the children that the Lord will give you by this young woman, may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. Oh shit. And who knows how to say this stuff? Like, who would know to even say all these names and stuff? Yeah. But so, yo, am I liking Boaz or not right now? This seems shady, man. I think he was going to take the land, but he realized he'd get called out on it. Like, and somebody might, the the, the first of kin would have stepped up at one point. Well, let's examine what you just said. Let's unpack it. One. One. Okay. Eliminate all the biases that you might have towards these people for whatever reason you might have these biases all right let's just say it's you know moab or whatever this guy's name is boaz is a non-denominational generic like white person sure okay now um don't compare him don't like put him up against like shit that's already happened in the bible Okay. Just judge him based on his actions okay. without your cynical take Fair on him being an Israelite and a Jew. Fair enough. Okay. I'll still ask the questions. Is he being shady <laughs> here or not? Like, I, I don't know if he's being shady. I don't know because we're prepared. We've been conditioned now by this book for some bullshit. Right? So I'm basically saying if Boaz was to take – he, he wanted witnesses because I think people would say, whoa, how are you second in, in the line of succession and you got Ruth and you got the land? So he had to do it in front of people. But it just, it just seems – I don't know. I don't like it, man. So um, I'm also going to say that Samson was probably not at this place ever because in verse 11 it says, then all the people who were at the gate along with the elders <laughs> – and fucking, you know, he did not like towns to keep their gates. I, I'm, I'm so glad you said that because I was actually thinking when we read that, wouldn't it be like a funny like skit? Like every time they mention the gate, Samson runs in, grabs it, and runs off without saying anything. And we're like, what the fuck just happened? He's like the Hamburglar, except yeah. for gates. <laughs> Anytime a gate shows up, he. Uh, All right. Oh, the board game I'm creating. Maybe I'll do that. Like one of the cards you get. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're the, creating a board the game? The Bible board game, man. Oh, okay. All right. Like one of the cards you draw, like it could be good or bad. One of them, like, Samson steals your gate, move back three squares or something, you know? <laughs> right. That's good. All right. Nice. Oh, look at this. Look at the title of the next section that ends the book of Ruth. Oh. The genealogy of David. So that's like David and Goliath, bro. Oh, right, David, okay, right, right. The right. genealogy of David. So the book of Ruth can't even end about Ruth. It's got to be about David. I don't know. It's the genealogy of David. All right. I mean, we had the genealogy of like Abraham. Remember, like the last section of like the beginnings of Genesis, like Genesis five or six or yeah. whatever it was, was like, and then like here are all the people that led up to fucking Abraham. Uh, that's good reading, man. <laughs> I mean, where would you ever have learned about Methuselah Yeah, if not then? The genealogy of David, Ruth 13. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. All right. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. So now I feel like they're using a different next of kin kind of like term here. Eh, whatever. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to, the, more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. So there you go. So these are like David's great-grandparents. Okay, that's fine. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name. Who the fuck are they to give him the name? <laughs> well, they're... they're bes- all right. You know what? This has all become clear to me now. Oh, good, good. The story 
of Ruth is she's the matriarch of David, okay? But here's what makes Ruth special. All right. So her mother-in-law is Naomi. Naomi lost her husband and her sons. There was no one that was going to take care of fucking... Naomi. Right. It's like, imagine like the movie Road Warrior, like a post apocalyptic fucking hellscape, right? Okay. Yeah. That's Canaan. I mean, more or less, <laughs> yeah. right? In this time period, even now, even today, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, the, the, this land is like that post apocalyptic like situation. Right, right. So, like, an elderly woman who has nothing to offer anyone. Who's dried up. You know what I mean? Like, what can you use her for at this point? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you are an awful person. <laughs> I'm not the one that makes I the know. rules, Scott. I'm just living in the world. I know, I know. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> she has now lost all of the men in her life. Mm. Ruth, though, knows that she can still get married and provide. So when Naomi gives that whole speech to Ruth and the other woman, her other daughter-in-law, and the other woman leaves and Ruth stays, Ruth knows if I leave this woman, she's going to fucking die. Like, she's going to die. So she went with her. She sets herself up with, like, the sugar daddy. And through the sugar daddy... Naomi is also now part of like the continuation of this clan mm. and they're keeping like Naomi's son's name alive through like Ruth and like so it's like all intertwined. So the book of Ruth is basically telling you the circumstances through which David you know who Imagine. I know is like a major fucking like king of like Israel. You know, David's like a like fucking what's his name? Did like a Sex. beautiful fucking statue of David, yeah, yeah. Michelangelo yeah. in Florence. It's yeah. like one of the most famous statues that yeah. Florida doesn't want you to see. Yeah. So Should that's it. So the book of Ruth is basically about fucking his great grandmother. So we know now, but we do know that there's actually no bloodline back to Naomi. It was name in name only, right? Because Boaz kept the, the other husband's name. Just so. I mean, to a certain extent, there must be because they're all living in small villages. They're all somehow related. They're all part of the same clan. Yeah, eventually. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll come out with something you can spit in a tube, send it somewhere, and they'll tell you exactly <laughs> right. who the fuck is uh, the father. Speaking of who you you are not the father, even though that was a uh, Maury Povich, Jerry Springer died, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I found out about Jerry Springer? I do not. He fucking grew up in my neighborhood. He went to the school that my son is in. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, great. Great. <laughs> so your son could be the mayor of Cincinnati one day. Huh? Hopefully. Right? He was mayor of Cincinnati? Yeah. yeah. All right. That's you pretty want, good. You, what? That's successful? No, yeah, you don't sure. Think mayor so. of anything is successful. Cincinnati's got a baseball team. They do. Yeah, they got they a major do. league team in Cincinnati. Yeah. It's like one of the cities of Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Ohio? <laughs> Uh, do you want to you want to finish out the chapter, man? You want to do it now? These are the descendants of Perez. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron of Ram, Ram of Aminadab, Aminadab of Nishan, Nishan of Salmon, Salmon of Boaz, Boaz of Obed, Obed of Jesse, and Jesse of David. But up, but up, but up, but up, but up. What the fuck fell, man? While I was reading. It doesn't matter, man. You're like, it's like fucking doing a show with a toddler. <laughs> you get all distracted. <laughs> you can't read like a sentence without stumbling through it. You're dropping things. Yeah. So what do we think of Ruth, man? Um, I thought that it was a waste of time. Oh, but the, the, the purpose of it was, like you said, that now we know uh, David's coming. But you know what? Maybe we're also, maybe we're the problem, Scott. Because this was the first feel-good, actual feel-good fucking stories. If you think about it, if you made this a movie, it starts off with the tragic death of this entire line of men. Which, first of all, you have to question, how did all of them die? Car accident. Who was responsible for like these deaths? Notice it's not mentioned why they died. Mm, good okay? point. And then these women make good. 
you know, because Ruth. Maybe we're going to find out somewhere down the line that someone was like claiming something about David when David comes around and like name was like, oh, yeah, that's my boy. That's my great, great grandson, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And I'm like, wait a minute. How is that even possible? So they had to concoct this story so they could trace the lineage back to her. Right. There's probably like a book of like, you know, Judy somewhere <laughs> where like they claim that Judy's like the granddaughter, grand yeah. fucking grandmother of David. But it, be- it be- contained doctrinal errors so they couldn't use it. Hmm. All right. So. This is this season's shorter than most Met seasons, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like, uh, and here's the first pitch, and the season's <laughs> over. <Yeah. laughs> Swing and a miss. See you next year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, is that it, Scott? Right, Do we I, have anything left? Yeah, no. Do I we have I, anything left? I th- I don't think we have anything left. Do you still feel bad about stumbling through our previously on? No, man. You I'm feeling sorry. all right? It's over, man. It's you over, feeling man. good? You're gonna edit and, and reflect me in a, in a in a better light than than I really was, and, 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 and I thank you for that. Right. You better That's fucking edit it. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta go there? Now what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna increase the volume when you fucking. I'm gonna stretch it out. <laughs> Nobody makes fun of Joe Biden when he stutters and st- stammers. Yeah. Well, Joe Biden has a disability. You're just. I'm dumb. just what? Brains? You saying I got no brains? <laughs> no. Nails, no, no, nails. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, that's a wrap. Later. Adios.